We'll have to wait to see what the answers will be. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to Dr. Alan Wu. I have instituted a 2C19 program at my hospital based on the information from the FDA and the black box warning. And so what I'm going to really appeal to you today is that you are in my shoes as laboratory people, and you have a lot of influence. You have the ability to do this kind of thing if, in fact, you believe in personalized medicine, if you believe in the data that we're showing, and you have access to technology that allows you to do 2C19 testing. So this, the second part of that question, already here, you can see in this booth, we have a, the ability to do 2C19 testing. So it then becomes incumbent on you to convince yourself, not just as a laboratory person, but perhaps as a, even as a consumer, because you probably have people who you know are on Plavix, and you need to ask yourself, is this something that I would want for myself? I'm not on Plavix, but I happen to know that I am a star one, star two, and that if I were to be on Plavix, I would probably want a higher dose. And I would want to participate in the decision-making process. We're not just robots anymore where we just take blindly the information given to us by our clinicians that we can drive our own um, management, especially from a, uh, a laboratory perspective, since you are laboratory people like, me, my, like myself. I'm a more visual kind of guy than Dr. Cole. So here is 2C19 in the liver. If you have a polymorphism, you end up forming the inactive metabolite, the drug doesn't work. It's just that simple. We need 2C19 to produce the drug. <clears throat> this is the data that links the pharmacokinetics and the pharmacodynamics of 2C19 and platelet function. It's, it's truly a multifaceted aspect. We need to be able to, to look at what the drug does on platelet function and what the drug does in terms of the concentration of the active metabolite. And what this slide shows is that if you are a poor metabolizer or an intermediate metabolizer, the level of the active metabolite is less than the wild type and the degree of platelet activation is also less. You, you don't see a, as big of a change from baseline to post clopidogrel and that's the whole objective is you want to block those receptors, you want to knock out those platelets and, and if you're a poor metabolizer you can't do it. <clears throat> Again, this is the active metabolite, very short-lived <clears throat> and this is the mega study. So this shows that if you have one copy or more of the poor metabolizing genes, this is star 2, star 3 particularly, <clears throat> your adverse outcome rate is 50% higher at 360 days than if you're a wild type. 8% if you're a wild type versus 12% if you are a carrier of one of these genes. <clears throat> and we're looking at the primary outcome of death, myocardial infarction, or need for restenosis and revascularization. 50% higher rate. So if this were you, you would say, I want the best therapeutics that I can get. Dr. Cole mentioned about the 2C19 star 17 genotype, which is the opposite direction. This is a hypermetabolizer. You end up producing a little bit too much of the active metabolite and, and shifting the, the platelet spectrum from inactivity to hypercoagulation. And um, <clears throat> so there's a decrease in, uh, an increase in, in, uh, in bleeding effects if you block out the, the platelets too much. So there are various technologies that are available. We've had um, platelet function tests for many years now. They, they require that the patient be on the drug, that the, the samples be collected in special tubes. They can't be transported to uh, another lab because shaking the sample will activate the platelets. They have to be done within three and a half hours of collection. So it's a good test, but it doesn't quite uh, meet everybody's need. <clears throat> The pharmacogenomic test has the advantages that it can be done at any time, even before the patient's put on Plavix, even before you know that they're going to have a PCI. As I say, I already know what my 2C19 genotype is. Uh, how many of you know what yours are? Hey, we got one. <clears throat> and then 
the second question here is what do we do with the information? Because as Dr. Cole mentioned, there is no specific algorithm as to what you do when you are 2C19, star 2, or star 3. And we are working with autogenomics and others to look at developing an assay for the active metabolite. The thinking here is that once you've been identified as being a star 2, star 3, and the levels of the active metabolite is low, can we titrate the drug to perhaps 150 milligrams or even higher and, and reproduce the active metabolite concentration that is seen in wild type? And if we do that, then we have every expectation that the outcomes should be about the same because it's the only reason that the outcomes are poor for patients who have the star 2, star 3. So there is a clinical trial that has recently been completed making use of the platelet function test as the point of randomization. Now, nobody has done a 2C19 randomization, but in this Gravitas study, they randomized patients to either 75 or 150 milligrams based on the finding of a platelet-resistant test. <clears throat> Followed up patients for one in six months outcome. So this data is not available yet. The trial ended in March. And so we'll know probably by the end of the year whether this approach works. In my feeling is that if you have a platelet sensitivity, <clears throat> increasing the dose may not necessarily fix the problem because you may have alternate pathways that lead to platelet activation. <clears throat> On the other hand, if you have a pharmacokinetic reason, you just simply don't have enough drug and the platelet uh, themselves are normal or wild type, then I believe that this is a more effective approach at, at, uh, at making a therapeutic decision. You know, we don't have a, a uh, guideline, and so we're, we're pretty much based on, on deciding as, as we go along. And this slide here kind of is a little detailed, but it, it kind of shows that uh, some patients end up having two times, three times, even four times the amount of clopidogrel in order to, to have sufficiently knocked out their platelets. <clears throat> and I think that most cardiologists are not going to quadruple the dose. They're going to go to an altered drug in that situation. So let me give you a case report. So I do interact with our cardiologists on these cases. We do offer both the platelet function test as well as the 2C19. Here's a patient who had a uh, myocardial infarction was put, put into the cath lab, a stent was put in, and a day later he had a restenosis. So opened up the artery, re-blocked the next day. The, he thought that perhaps the, the Plavix was not working on this individual. We did a combination of the uh, platelet uh, function test, which was shown to be resistant, and we did the 2C19, which shown to be wild type, okay? So he had one of these platelets that were able to activate and was not being blocked by low metabolite. So increasing the dose in this particular patient probably wouldn't help. We'd probably have to go to 225, maybe even 300 milligrams in terms of a daily dose. We ended up recommending that he go to a different drug. Crasigrel, in this case, is not metabolized by 2C19. It is more expensive, has a higher rate of bleeding. But this patient doesn't have bleeding problems. This patient had a problem of, of, of reblocking his artery. So <clears throat> multiple technologies available here. We don't know exactly what we're going to do with the information, but the 2C19 genotyping is here and available today. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> okay.